Ben, you like, I don't think we can. I don't think we can uh, do two things at once. We can't. Yeah. We can't. <laughs> I can't watch the TV and someone talks at me at all. I got oh, to turn no, the TV saying. down. Like what? So it's same in the. Yeah, if I'm on the, the phone and someone talks to me, I get the shit. Yeah. So I crack it. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's just really difficult. Yeah, not for chicks though. They can do that stuff. Yeah, I don't know how they do it. No, nah. man, that's interesting to me. You know, there was a time in my life where um, I was smoking weed. Yeah, for a time in my life, it stopped years and a long time ago, right? Yeah, but for some, I'm only saying this to you because as soon as I did it, I was living with a bunch of dudes and they introduced me to it. And next yeah. minute, like it was two years. Um, my mind said, Drew, you've always wanted to paint. Yeah, I, I got. I actually bought oils and small canvases and I did that for two years sort yeah, of thing. Nice. And then the moment I stopped doing that, I never did it ever again. Oh, really? Yeah. So the artist, so that really spins me out. Like, you know, for some reason, like a little gate was opened in my brain because of that stuff. Yeah. Right. Happy it's gone, you know, to be honest. But, yeah. Saving a bit of money. But at the same time, I went, wow, I really love doing that stuff. And I, I tried to do it recently, but I just I can't, I can't see as well, you know. Yeah. So artists really... I know a few of them, and it just blows my mind. It really interests me how you can, or put it this way, you've got a few, a few designs with Death Collective there. Yeah, no doubt you, being an artist, have done one hundred before you chose those few, or you just worked one hundred ideas yeah. into a few, and that goes, well, I love that. That's the one. I definitely like. Yeah, I think my brain's more of a designer-based brain than an artist. I enjoy art and everything, but for me. Yeah, I, I'm a beast of logic. So it's yeah. this, yeah, for me, doing design is this, it's, it's important, you know, all the spaces are right and it's balanced and it's right. like, whereas art for me is more free flowing. It doesn't matter what it, how balanced it is. It's, you know, yeah. it's what it means to you. Whereas, yeah, I'm more yeah, like. but you've still got an idea. On, yeah, like you said, the spacing, the end result oh, yeah, is take, where the art comes into it. No, no, no. For some reason that doesn't look right. Whatever that is. Oh, you always have move like that there heaps and that on looks screen. Right, yeah. yeah. I'm lucky too with, with Death Collective. I've got a few artists that I outsource the work to. Uh, so I do a, some of it myself yeah. and then a, a lot of it I'll send to a few other guys. And um, right. yeah, there's one guy in particular, Benny Blunder is his Instagram name. Check him out. Yeah. He's ridiculously good. Like he's, right. I don't know, he just gets it. Like okay. I love working with people where you don't actually have to give them too much input. I give them a little bit of a brief and just say, yep, this is what I'm chasing. Yeah. First go, he'll get it right every time. Like he'll smash it. Excellent. And um, yeah, he's just a nice guy to work with as well. Like he's just a, good dude like yeah so yeah having guys like that on board and you know having a good group of people around you just makes everything so much easier so is it all done on computer now uh majority is yeah right. so uh, i'm not too sure how benny works i think he kind of does it some pencil sketches first and right. then eventually transfers onto uh, like adobe illustrator or photoshop or depending yeah. on the artwork what he's working in so have you got a you've got a design shop is that right or is yeah so i find that I'm yeah i actually I, I share an office space with two other guys so um Matty Mack, the, yeah, the freestyle writer from Nitro Circus, he decided he was over wasting money partying and when he came home from one of the tours, actually bought... Pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell the story of how he came to that realisation, but yeah, okay. it, it was in Bali <laughs> on a certain type of milkshake. But, um, <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. I was, thinking, I was hearing about this yesterday. Yeah. Not, so not his story, but... Yeah, I'll let him tell that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he's come home and bought this. It's like an old mechanic. It was an old mechanics <laughs> with, you know, had grease stains all over the floor. And okay. I just remember one time he's like, yeah, come check it out. And he'd, yeah. he'd already polished the floors, but it was essentially just this, yeah, old mechanics with the mechanic used to live upstairs as well. So it was all like toilet shower, everything like you could live in there, yeah. but it was, it was pretty, pretty gross. Like it was yeah. dilapidated. And at that point he was just storing all these bikes and his sister's bikes and everything there. Yeah. And then, yeah, just went in there and he's like, oh, I'm thinking about doing a photo studio downstairs. I'm like, well, what are you doing with upstairs? Can I rent one of the spaces? So yeah, that's kind of where it started. And then, yeah, we just spent like, I think it was that, that kind of November through to Christmas and New Year's and yep. everything. We just got in there and started renoing and painted everything. And right. uh, one of our mates, Fipsy, is just, yeah, ended up building a heap of the stuff for the studio. Like he actually built the big cyclorama wall, which is like your big infinity kind of curve. Right. Uh, he built all that by himself and like Maddie obviously helped out and yeah another one of my mates Berner he helped me upstairs like building like renovating all the kitchen and you're nice. just making it look good it this looked pretty gross upstairs and now it actually looks half presentable yeah, so now so you have a you had a brand in your mind you know yeah well that's, that's I just right. wanted to keep it simple and um yeah. if anyone knows the kind of stuff I do it is very monotone like black and white super simple super yeah. clean and I was stoked because Maddie kind of shared that vision as well like just keep it really simple and yeah, yeah it's just real nice and clean in there and was Death Collective, an idea at that point? Were you? Yeah, so, I mean, to give you a bit of a story behind Death Collective, the, yeah. the whole name and 
everyone's this, I don't know, I think it gets misinterpreted, but Death Collective actually started one of my close mates passed away. Um, so, yeah, I'm not too sure if you're familiar with him. Dane Searles, he was a really uh, talented BMXer, just pretty much, he still is the best uh, jumper in the world in my mind. Like, no one even comes close. The dude was so talented, just an amazing guy. Yep. Um, when he passed away, we're all down Central Coast somewhere for the funeral, and we're kind of all standing around there, and it was just, yeah, it was, it was weird in a way. I was kind of, it was good that, ev like, I hadn't seen a lot of this crew for ages, and we were kind of just all standing around in this circle, and I'm just like, well, like, we've got pretty amazing group of friends here, and, like, mm -hmm. everyone's super talented, and, yeah, we just had this, yeah, it was this it was, it was weird feeling, like, where, it, you know, it took that death of Dane to bring everyone together, yep. and, um, I don't know, Dane kind of, before he passed away, he jumped some of the biggest dirt jumps in the world, like, was jumping 60 foot, back flipping it, wow. like, was doing crazy stuff on a bike, and the only thing, the only reason that ended up happening is because he saw it in his head and he always wanted to do it and he was going to do anything he could to get it done. Yeah. And um, I always kind of had this thing in my head, like I always wanted to do my own little like creative outlet. Like I just have a normal full-time job, but kind of do something on the side as well. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what kicked my ass to do it. And then I never knew what I wanted to call it. Right. And then um, I'm like, well, why am I starting this brand? Like that's, you got to kind of get delve deep into it. And yeah. I'm like, the whole reason I started is because like, yeah, that could have been me who passed away. That could have been anyone. Like, yeah. So kind of, yeah, just gave me the kick in the ass and then that's where the, the name Death Collective came from because we had this group of friends. We are all together because this guy passed away. Yeah. So it was, um, yeah, pretty heavy. That was He passed away in 2000, 2011. Yeah. Unfortunately, on my birthday as well. Oh. Um, yeah, November 25th, 2011. That's a bit rude. Yeah, it's, <laughs> in a way, it's kind of on, like I'm, on, on, I'm honoured to today. feel like honored to, f to yeah. kind of share a day with it yeah that yep. makes sense like yeah. i don't know it's a weird no, weird way to think but um yeah so it's, it's about 2012 where i kind of came up with the idea to do my own thing and to be like totally honest when death collector started it, it didn't really have much to do with bikes yep. it's just i needed to do something like right. so the first kind of theme of the first range of death collective was um you've you know your time's limited you know you just make the most of life okay. so a lot of the t's like one of the t's just said ain't no dollars after death so yeah. it's like, you know, don't get too worried about money. Yeah. Just go out and have fun. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just a lot of that right. kind of theme. And then the second range was about when I bought my first bike uh -huh. and then – or first road bike. Yeah. And that's kind of – yeah, that's when it really started getting into bikes because then I, I started – like the same people that I met at the funeral that I'd never actually met before, I met a lot of new guys. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh, they've got a Harley. And it's like, do you want to go for a ride? And then all of a sudden, we just had this big crew of guys. Yeah, and I was who just, just love two wheels. Like, yeah, like a lot of them – like used to race professionally or, you know, yeah. maybe they didn't. They just, you know, they've, this is their first bike. It didn't, yeah. there's this weird group of like real kind of mixed bunch, but we all just got along really, really well. And yeah. like we'd all just go out in the hills, like behind the Gold Coast, like just behind the studio pretty right. much. And yeah, just have a heap of fun. And I started taking a GoPro and then I started taking like an SLR camera out with me and yep. just started taking a heap of photos and only had about two or three t-shirts at that point. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just instead of posting photos of the t-shirts, I'm just like, well, I don't really give a shit if I sell T-shirts. Like, the whole reason I did this is to have fun with my mates. Yeah. So I just went out and started taking photos of us all, like, having fun on bikes, and then just evolved from there. Everyone else started, right. like, you know, getting onto the Instagram and going, these guys, like, having, like, looks yeah. like they're having a ball. And then I'd get texts from random people just saying, hey, can I come for a ride? And I'm like, yeah, dude, and, like, exactly. definitely meet us here. Like, we used to always meet at this Caltech server and just meet us there and we'll go for a ride. And, yeah, that's kind of just how – and it's just evolved since then. That's right, man. So, well, I'm, I'm the I'm – the prime candidate for that like i saw your label and went i want i want that <laughs> i want to be in that gang i want to be, I want to be a part of that That's it's not like, a gang it's just an idea exactly i yeah. know you know but inside me i'm going oh i want to that, i want to be in those mates like look at that that was that was the coolest thing that just rode past me yeah and then last sunday we went for a ride and maddie mac was there and guy oh, yeah, yeah, guy yeah. invited me out yeah. with bruce and i would have been there i was down in melbourne though well, so. yeah, yeah yeah well um uh but the first thing i did as soon as I finished the ride, I went, yeah, I was with the Death Collective crew. Yeah. You know, like, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to tell everyone, like, I felt like, uh, yeah, and I actually, like, I was close to this thing that I saw that really was, like, a attractive to me. Like, man, that is labels, that look, it's just like... Yeah, it's... Uh, like, finally, it's like rock and roll is lining up with um, with bikes again, you know, yeah. to me. For, I don't know. For me, it's just an expression of, of fun. Like, if, yeah, I don't really want to feel like we have this group and, you know, it's exclusive and blah, blah, blah. It's mm. just, it's more just about the idea. Like, yeah. And that's what it's always been about. It just so happens that I take a camera out and capture this stuff. Like yeah. there's people doing the same stuff we do all over Australia, all over the world. It's just yeah. that 
I happen to have a camera to capture it. And, you know, that's, that's yeah. the only difference between me and anyone else is just the fact yeah. that we've got a camera. Like, there's so many people who love bikes. It's just, and I just love, like, I was at Chopped yeah. on the weekend, which is like this kind of, it's like, imagine Cooley Rocks out in the middle of a paddock where they actually, like, thrash their classic cars. Right. And, um, yeah, I had a couple of buddies down there that were nice enough to let me stay with them. Yeah, shout out to the Treadheads down in Melbourne, okay. legends. Um, and yeah, it was, it was such an eye opener because it was all that similar mindset of just yeah. have fun. And like all these guys like probably spent, you know, thousands and hours and hours on their cars and yeah. bikes and then just get out there and thrash them. And I don't yeah. know, that just makes me so happy. Yeah, so happy. <laughs> like you're not, not so anal that it's not fun. You yeah. Know? It's, uh, a buddy of mine, Cohen Arthur actually came to the studio once and he's, he's got a lot of cool old pan heads and you know, old Harleys and stuff. Mm. And I'm just like, yeah, it's cool to see you actually ride them. And he just said, yeah, yeah ride them, don't hide them. And I'm yeah. like, hell yeah, that's sick. Like, that's right. That's like, so, like the Bonneville Salt Flats in California. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, that's it, get out. They made I mean, these great old hot rods, but they just yeah. drove them till they blew up. Like, yeah, if, know, I mean, if you're going to build a car like, and just wanted to look at it, you wouldn't put an engine in it. Like, the whole yeah. reason is so you can drive it or ride yeah. it. So, yeah, no. Some people just love working on cars, you know, so they, they yeah. get bored if they finish. Like, yeah, if anyone yeah. wants to work on my bike for me, please go ahead. It'd be good. <laughs> You've got a great triumph, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm Scramble. stoked on it. It's still kind of, this is a bit of an exclusive because I've been keeping it under wraps. Right. It's actually like a, um, a collaboration with a, with a company from America. So right. um, they were nice enough. They're called British Customs and they, um, yeah, they supplied all the parts for the build. So wow. yeah, it was kind of it was by chance because I was, I was going to like, I was buying a bike regardless. Didn't like, kind of wanted to make it a bit of a death collective bike. There's something you put in photos and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just went to buy some parts from these guys and they're like, oh, what do you think about doing a like, collaboration? And I'm just like, I'd love to. And then yeah. yeah, sent them a brief and kept talking to them, had a few Skype meetings and then yeah, sent me all the parts. And nice. So it's, it's still not official yet. It hasn't been released, but yeah. yeah. It's, well, it's um, a great looking bike, matte black, you know. Yeah. My mate, uh, John O'Tauber, he, when I lived in Sydney not long ago, he worked at the Triumph store in uh, yeah, cool. uh, North Sydney and beyond. I can't think of it. I can never think of it. Yeah. But yeah, I'd often be at his shop and, you know, all the new scramblers came out. This was probably like five, seven years ago, actually. Yeah. But I remember just going, all these bikes, they sold everything, but the Triumph just, you know, it wasn't, it was just in a, it, it holds a different zone, you know? Yeah, they still they got the kept classic this old, look. old yeah. classic look, you know, but that was still a great, reliable bike. Yeah, it definitely, like, I've got a soft spot for classic looking bikes for sure. So yeah. it's just, I, I mean, I'm a graphic designer, not a mechanic, so... I, I don't know a, a whole lot about, you know, repairing an old bike. So yeah. for me, having like the Triumphs and like I had a Royal Enfield before that, they're the old school looking bikes, but with a reliable engine. And, yeah. you know, some people kind of turn their nose off at that. But for me, it's just, as I said, it's about riding bikes and having fun. Yeah. Some people like working on bikes. I, I can't stand breaking down on the side of the road. Like, yeah, I, I like bikes because I can get out and ride them, not so I can fix them. So that's, yeah each to their own but that that's yeah. just what i'm about like just yeah. getting on them and riding them and that's why i love like the triumphs and enfields because you get that cool old school look but get I, a I bit more reliability yeah. so i love how everyone's putting dirt bike sort of tires on or knobby tires sort of yeah yeah dual purpose kind of thing that's so. brilliant that just looks so good i yeah. saw that in japan actually someone had a um just a uh, like a posty bike yeah but it was only a 70 i can't think of the word right now super cup i think they're called. yeah yeah the C- ct90s or something yeah yeah yeah, exactly. yeah yeah and um they had these all-purpose, what do you call them? Yeah. Oh, just saw knobby tyres on them. Dual, yeah, dual, dual purpose. purpose, right? Yeah. And well, to be honest, in Japan, it was the first time I'd seen it on the road. I went, oh, right, cool. that looks so good. Like, I couldn't believe it, actually. It was a cool, like, like a skater was riding this bike. Well, yeah. That was unreal. It was like a little window to what I was about to see with, at, <laughs> yeah. at, at Iron and Resin Garage. Yeah, like, well, Bruce, the guy from Iron and Resin, he's built a couple of scramblers now. Like, he's yeah. got a Triumph scrambler and a... I think it's a KLR 650 that it's, it's like, imagine like a big in Paris Dakar bike yeah. that is just shredded, taken everything off it and wow. then turned it into like this really slim down yeah. scrambler. But yeah, he's, yeah, he's definitely done some cool bikes, that guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's, scramblers are like, I guess the new cafe race, like the whole cafe race of things still pretty popular. But mm. I think, yeah, just by looking what's in the media at the moment and stuff like the whole bike media thing. Yep you can just see a lot more scrambles coming because they're fun. Like yep. you just, you're belting down the road and then all of a sudden you come to a bit of dirt and you don't have to stop. You just go yeah. faster. Like it's, it's awesome. Exactly. And it's the idea that, um, yeah, if you did grow up riding a dirt bike, yeah, you don't have to get on a big old slow Harley. Yeah. And they're not that slow. Oh yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. Compared to like, it's easy to out of a turn. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. It's an easier transition. Yeah, there, you can sort sure. of get on something that's still not as crazy as a big old slow cruiser. Yeah. You can, 
uh, yeah, there's a whole sort of other category to get in. Yeah, that's it.